Do you feel like it's impossible to keep up with society's beauty standards and you always seem to feel like crap in your body no matter what you do? I'm absolutely here for you and I totally get it. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you five key tools to transform your relationship with your body from one of criticism and constant never enoughness into peace, compassion, and love because that's what you deserve. Breaking free from this is so possible for you. This is exactly what I help women worldwide to do. Just like my beautiful client, Tally, who shares, I was unrecognizable. I didn't pursue my passions because I was really struggling with my body image, my self-confidence, and I felt like I had no purpose in the world. This was a completely life-changing experience. I found my purpose and I know that my body is not my identity and I appreciate this vessel that I have to live into my purpose. This is the work that I truly love and it fills me with so much joy. And if you are deeply struggling, I would love to support you. And the best way to connect with me and to learn more about this is to book a call in my calendar directly. And you can do that, it's free, through the link below. Now let's get into the video. So the number one key to loving your body in a society that is so obsessed with perfection is to understand your body is not the problem. Your mind is the problem. So repeat after me. My body is not the problem. There's nothing wrong with my body. My body is not the problem. There's nothing wrong with my body. You have to repeat that to remind yourself because you've been conditioned from the time you basically came out of the womb to believe everything is wrong with your body and you have to continuously obsess over perfecting your body in order to feel happy in the world. Now, the problem with this is obviously you have tried all of those things, I I'm guessing because you're here and you've realized because you're very smart, even when I've changed my body and I've lost weight, I still don't feel good enough. So we need to get very clear on this. Your body is not the problem. Your mind is actually a problem and it's not your fault. Recognize that society has conditioned you to believe that there is something deeply wrong with your body because that's exactly what profits capitalism and all of these industries, the diet industry, the beauty industry, you know, even the wellness industry, frankly, and the fitness industry, all of these industries profit off of you feeling fearful, like you're never enough, insecure, because that's what encourages you in those weakened states to feel vulnerable and buy into the products. So a really big part of you breaking free here is to recognize once again, I'm gonna keep saying it again because you need to hear it again. Your body is not the problem. You have been conditioned to believe that your body is the problem. So you need to start deconstructing these neural pathways in order to break free because society is not gonna change overnight. We are seeing progress, but it is slow. And I don't want you to wait to the end of your life to actually start living it and to feeling love for your body. So the key is here, recognize that it's not your fault. Recognize that this is society's problem. Put the responsibility back where it's due. And we're gonna start dismantling this conditioning so that you can break free because dismantling the conditioning is the only thing that is really going to set you free. So start by telling yourself, society has conditioned me to believe this. Doesn't mean it's true for me personally. It's not my fault that I learned to believe this. This is conditioning. The second key in order to develop a true loving relationship with your body and a world obsessed with perfection is to actually, like I said, start to do the work of retraining the deep-seated belief systems of unworthiness and never enoughness and start to really retrain and reprogram your mind from those limiting beliefs because again you could change your body till the end of time and obsess over having the perfect body and if you do nothing to the inside and the thought patterns and the belief systems that are running your life you're never going to feel enough and true confidence comes from within true confidence comes from here and everything that you already have within you. And that's what I wanna empower you to see. So how do we retrain the brain? Well, because these pathways have been very well grooved, I want you to kind of remind yourself that we all have this default operating system of criticism and negativity because that is the conditioning. And we've had these messages day in and day out bombarded you know, to, to us through every avenue possible. And so of course, our brain being the little intelligent structure that it is, understands that the more we see something, the more we think something, the more energy we spend on it, the more it cements it into our subconscious and belief systems. So the only way that we can actually gain our power back from this is to weaken those neural pathways. And because the brain is so beautifully advanced, the less you think something, the less intensity something has, the less thought you give it, the more it breaks down those neural pathways, which eventually 
just completely dissolve and they get pruned off. Much like if a branch on a tree died off, eventually the tree will stop sending energy there because the tree, that part of the tree is dead and it's not living anymore. So that's what gardeners do too. I've gone on a tangent, but you get it, right? So we want to prune off those thought patterns so that we can actually gain our power back. How you start doing that, I will show you a very clear technique. These thoughts are going to continue firing every single day. So I want you to first of all recognize that and observe that. Two very important things that you can do to start weakening these neural pathways and getting your power back is to recognize and say aloud, a part of me was conditioned to believe this negativity. So let's say I have a thought that says, I hate my body, I wish my legs were slimmer. That is all conditioning. That's not true Julia speaking, that's conditioning that I learned. So when I hear that thought fire in my brain, I'm actually going to out loud after that thought happens say, there's that conditioning again, there's that part of me that learned that negativity. So you wanna actually teach your brain that's conditioning, that's conditioning, that's conditioning, because you start to remove your identity from that conditioning and you start to dismantle these belief systems and gain more space from them. So that's number one. It doesn't matter if the negative thought happens and you know right away you can't do that exercise. Sometimes it takes time, but even if retroactively you can remind yourself oh my goodness, I can recognize this morning when I was looking in the mirror and I was having all those negative thoughts, that was the conditioning talking. Number three, you wanna support your nervous system in regulating itself and lowering stress. Why? Because when we are activated in certain branches of our nervous system, the sympathetic and the dorsal vagal branch of our nervous system, and we are stressed, what happens is that goes hand in hand with increasing negative based thoughts because those are also very stressful. So they kind of go hand in hand together. So this is interesting. You probably notice that if you're having a stressful day with work or your finances or something completely unrelated is happening in your life, it's no surprise that all of a sudden all of those little negative body image thoughts start popping up everywhere because it's all based in the same energy. It's all rooted in the same energy. What we wanna do are some simple practices to bring more peace and harmony and ease into our nervous system so that we actually start turning off, we actually do turn off specific uh, structures in the brain which allow us to come back into this energy of peace and confidence. In order to actually feel things like confidence, compassion and things on the higher end of the vibrational chart, feeling safe, grounded, all of those things, acceptance, you actually have to be in the ventral vagal branch of your nervous system. So we cannot feel those things about ourselves and our body if we are stuck in a stressful state. Therefore, we wanna do things that encourage us to go into the ventral vagal branch of our nervous system. Some really easy tools that I love so much, this one's called havening. So you just cross your hands at your shoulders, you slide your hands down to your elbows, lift up and repeat. And doing this for one to five minutes can really help to bring safety and ease to your nervous system. I teach a lot of EFT tapping on my page because it is an absolutely amazing tool for both retraining and reprogramming the mind and also regulating the nervous system. So you can tap through the points continuously, just like I'm demonstrating here. And I like to set a timer for five minutes and just use this tool by tapping continuously through the points. I show more evolved versions of this tool and all the wonders that we can do with it to bring more confidence to our body and relationship with our body on my page. So you can check more of that out there. Those are two very simple tools you can use. And the third one, which I love so much and it's so easy and accessible uh, is walking. So if you're able to walk, walking is a fantastic way to shut off the stress response and actually support us to come into more regulation with our body image because of the way that our body moves when we walk bilateral stimulation and the fact that our eyes actually move from being in a very unilateral state. So, so our eyes are like stuck like this when we're stressed when we're walking we actually have to take in our environment because we're moving we're crossing the street and that action in itself of taking in your periphery actually shuts off and shrinks the amygdala which is the part of the brain that is responsible for turning on our stress response and feeding attention to the negative thoughts so the next time you feel negatively about your body and you want to increase some love head outside go for a walk and bonus in nature if you can make it happen because it's even more effective so i hope those tools help you number four bring attention to the joys in your life your brain like like everybody else's is trained to have a negativity bias. That's part of our evolution as a human species is always focusing on the problems, always focusing on the negatives. 
And this happens all the time by default from the time we wake up. So if you want to feel more joy in your life, you want to cultivate more love for yourself and your body, you actually have to focus on it because it doesn't happen naturally. So really important to actually practice. And I know it sounds cliche and you've heard it before, but gratitude is one of the simplest and most effective, powerful ways that we can actually cultivate more joy and love in our lives and with our body. If your brain is just running on its default network like it does, it will take you down the rest of the day with all the negativity. So set a practice for yourself. Maybe you wanna create a five, 10 minute practice in the morning where you journal your gratitude. Maybe you wanna make it a, a game that you do with your friends where when you call each other, you actually ask first like, hey, what are you grateful for? What, what wonderful things happened to you this week? You wanna actually make this an anchored practice so that your brain starts to focus on the joy, not the weeds. Some questions that you can ask yourself other than what am I grateful for today are, what joys do I have in my life? How is life loving me today? what went well today. And if you're thinking of a future situation, you can even ask yourself, what if the best thing happened? Because often we think of a situation and we go, well, what if the worst thing happens, right? That's just naturally what we think about. You're probably laughing because you're like, yeah, that happens for me too. Well, what if the best situation happened? Think about that. So you want to start actively retraining the brain. And the beautiful thing is the more you focus on the joys, the more you focus on the good, the more it compounds and the higher your vibration is and the more you manifest the life that you want. It's actually science, quantum science to be exact. Number five, finally, stop dieting. I know it's hard, but dieting and restricting food and having a relationship that is unhealthy with food is one of the biggest contributors to us having an unhealthy relationship with our body image. We make our love and respect for our body conditional and we make it very difficult for us to have peace with our body image it, it just goes hand in hand by now you probably know dieting is not sustainable it doesn't work it breeds insecurity and anxiety and food obsession and you basically guarantee that you're operating in that stress state of your nervous system every day all day long and therefore you're basically creating the predictable outcome that you're just going to feel negative all the time and stress and you're you're never going to really feel good in your body. One of the best things I ever did was really breaking free of that lifelong dieting and restrictive relationship with food, learning how to have peace with food and it made me feel so much love and respect for my body and in turn made me want to take such loving care of my body. Uh, because I just developed this beautiful acceptance and this relationship with peace. Again, that's a ripple effect you're going to see in every area of your life. So I know it's hard, but if you're still dieting and restricting and having this fear-based relationship with food, chances are you have a direct fear-based, anxious, unhappy relationship with your body as well. Two final little notes I want to say because they're really important. If you are someone who has a closet full of clothes that do not fit you and you are hanging on to things that do not support your body today, i.e. you're saying I'm keeping these here because I'm going to wait until my body fits into them, you're actually also actively creating a very negative relationship with your body image wherein you are making your worth and happiness conditional on your body size. You want to actually have clothes in your closet that fit you today because that teaches you I can celebrate the body that I have today and I am worth celebrating I am worth decorating I am worth feeling good and comfortable nobody wants to wear clothes that are too small and feel really uncomfortable it also sends messages to our nervous system that we are stressed we are not safe which further exacerbates negative thoughts about your body so please do yourself a favor get rid of the clothes that do not fit you today if you're hanging on to things from the past, it means you are really hanging on to a past version of yourself and that does not serve you in any way and it is definitely keeping you stuck and stagnated. Get rid of those clothes, give them away, that will help you feel good, give them to someone in need, put them away in a box and really give yourself the gift of feeling good today because you deserve to feel good today and treating your body with care and nurturing it is going to result in you having more love for it and wanting to take the best care of it. And finally, if you are really struggling, know that this is really difficult and I totally get that. So staying in this alone is something that really keeps us stuck even more because shame and isolation and all these feelings of loneliness when we're going through body image struggles really just put gasoline on the fire that are these struggles. So 
reach out and work with someone directly to heal this because it's going to be the best investment you make in yourself and in your life. I've worked with people that have waited till their 60s to start doing this work, 70s, you know, and realize like, I wish I just did this work earlier and got to live my life the way I fully deserve. So just give yourself that gift. If you want to learn more about working with me, as I said before, I would love to connect with you. You can get into my calendar and we can have a beautiful conversation together and learn more about what this process would look like. And the link below will take you there. And I'm super proud of you for staying to the end of this video and doing this work. You're making a huge impact in your relationship with your body, self-love, and the quality of your life. So I'll see you again soon.